The Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins. The war changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. And when it was over, his former life was over, too. Adventure had become his business. The Adventures of Frank Race. for The Adventure of Seventeen Black. Saratoga, city of sport and health, where you can watch the thoroughbreds come thundering into the stretch or increase your physical efficiency with its spring water and sunshine. But my sport at the moment wasn't taking place in the sunshine. And I'm afraid the healthful effect of its atmosphere was rather dubious. Number 17, Black. And uh, now you're coming up, Mr. Race. Well, it's about time after what I've dropped here tonight. I'll let that ride again. Aha! Uh -huh. At last I find you, sir. Oh, hello, Mark. Thought you were in New York. Place your bets, please. I was sent up here to find you. We've got to get going. Come on. Well, won't you hurry? I'm busy. You're going to be busy. You've got a hasty task for universal indemnity. The embezzlement job, and they want is right now. Number 17, Black. Oh, ah, looks like you're in the groove, Mr. Race. I've got luck on my shoulder. Leave it right there, Eddie. I'm letting it ride. Oh, no, he ain't, Eddie. Push it this way. We are heading for New York. Yeah, but, Mark, I'm just beginning to win. You ain't going to win by leaving it there. Let's blow. This is important. Place your bets, please. Well, I uh, suppose you're right. Come on. Sightney, I'm right. Nobody can keep playing one number on that thing. It just ain't in the books. Yeah, hold on a second. 17 black. Oh, yes. You see what did I tell? Hey, you, you won again? Yeah, I would have won. If you hadn't picked up the bet. Hey, uh, look, uh, maybe we want to go back and play that thing for a while, huh? Yeah, you're, you're hot. Come on, Mark. We're heading for New York. <laughs> Talk to you from the insurance company, Reed. Yeah, chest A, Reed. I told him you wanted a little time to yourself, but he said I was to get you anyway. He told me all about it, see, so I could brief you. What's the story? Some guy keeping books for a construction outfit took 70 G's of the company's money. He was bonded with Universal. Reed wants me to go after him, huh? No, no, not the guy. He's dead. Suicide. Reed wants you should see if you can find the dough. <laughs> Universal indemnity, I ain't got the details. The alleged embezzler had been a man named O'Connor with a home in Yonkers. I had Mark drive me over there to see his wife. What's the use of talking about it? Johnny's dead. After a while, I suppose I'll be able to tell myself I still got a baby. Baby? He's a year old. How you fix the money? I've got the rent for another month. Got some ground meat for supper. I guess I'll have to get a job pretty soon. Didn't your husband have insurance? Eight thousand dollars worth. But we'll never get any of it. Not if they call him suicide. Oh, that should have occurred to me. How did he die, Mrs. O'Connor? He was found in the garage. Shot in the car. Carbon monoxide. I see. They'll never convince me that he committed suicide. Not Johnny. He enjoyed life too much. Why? He was right in the middle of making a crib for the baby. And if he stole that money, where is it? Well, I understand there was a confession. A fake. Even if it is in Johnny's handwriting. Here it is. Mm -hmm. I'm taking the only way out. When they audit my records, they'll find I've misappropriated $70,000. Try to forgive me, Johnny. He never took that money. Well, possibly not, but it's missing. And your husband is dead. If we're going to prove him innocent, you'll have to help me. Oh, I'll do anything. 
Did your husband have any friends in the company or particular enemies? Irving Dalton, the chief accountant. He always treated Johnny like a laborer. See, Johnny used to carry a hod, but when the baby was coming, he took a night school course in bookkeeping to better himself. Did Dalton hire your husband? No, no. T.J. Thomas does the hiring. He's general manager. Does Thomas have a financial interest in the company? I think he owns a third. The rest of it belongs to Mr. and Mrs. Maynard. Well, possibly Mr. Thomas can help a little. I'll see him tomorrow. In the meantime, take this. Oh, no, no. I couldn't. We'll call it a loan. Uh, You've got that youngster to think about. And for the time being, stay with your baby and forget about getting a job. Take me back to the city, Mark. What's cooking? Know anything about a family named Maynard? Oh, certainly a hard bunch to get along with. The old man's a retired cement finisher. See, the boys, they don't believe in labor of any kind. No, you're working in the wrong neighborhood, me. Maynard's I refer to are the big-time contractors. Oh, oh, big shots. No, no, I know. The rest. What is it? That's the dam behind us. What's that they're waving out the window? It's a Tommy gun. Right. You better do some twisting. They're waving it at us. Uh, do the best I can. You got a gun? In my hand. But against that firepower... He's I'm... getting on me, Race. We're going to get it. Race. Race, you okay? Yeah. Let me get my arm free. Let me help. He's you. coming up with that machine gun. He's lining us up, Race. He's going to... You got him. You got him. The other guy's running. Watch out. I didn't kill that one. Just hit him in the leg. Yeah, but he lost the chatterbox. We're okay. Yeah. Let me help you out. Yeah. Easy now. Take it easy. Yeah. 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 What kind of a deal is this anyway? Looks like a lethal deal, Mark. Somebody's playing for big keeps. You didn't go to an ordinary lumber yard to find the offices of the Maynard Construction Company. They took up half the 14th floor of a skyscraper. I was impressed by the handsome paneling, the ancestral portraits, and the cocktail party that was going on. Well, the place was rocking. It was only after quite a bit of elbow fencing I was able to force my way to a waiter. He promised to locate T.J. Thomas for me, but it was at least 15 minutes before I got a reaction. Uh, Mr. Race? That's right. I'm uh, Irving Dalton, chief accountant for the firm. You, uh, you've been moving around so you're a little dazed. You didn't come here on business, I hope, not this afternoon. What are you celebrating? Lifting of a mortgage? Well, uh, just a little party in honor of State Senator Humphreys. All this for a state senator? What would you do for a governor? I uh, understand you want to see Mr. Thomas. Yes, uh, T.J. Thomas, general manager, isn't he? Uh, that's correct, but you see... And it uh, says general manager on this door. It also says private, Mr. Race, and if you don't mind... Yeah, it's a long elevator ride up here. I'd like to conclude my business this time. So, if you ask me, I don't think it's a good idea. Really, darling, no one asked you. Mm, hold it a second. If you don't mind, this is rather private. Sort of board meeting. No, I don't mind at all. I'm most anxious to talk to the board. Now, uh, wait a minute. My name's Race. I represent the Universal Indemnity Company. I'm here concerning the claim on your bookkeeper, O'Connor. Oh. Well, in that case... Come right in, Mr. Race. I'm Sandra Maynard. This is Mr. Thomas, our general manager, and my husband, Arthur Maynard. Mm, what do you want to know, Race? Several things. But first, I'd like to express a personal opinion. Your bookkeeper didn't steal anything, and he didn't commit suicide. He was murdered. Dear me. Headlines. Headlines. Sandra, my darling, your welfare league group will buzz about this one. Oh, Arthur, shut up. This is very interesting. Are you ready to prove that someone else misappropriated the money, Mr. Race? Not yet. But that much money doesn't just disappear. It's an outright case of embezzlement. The books speak for themselves. Oh, I should think so. Oh, of course. You know all about the records, don't you, darling? I don't know what keeps me from clawing your face off. And I'm warning you, Arthur, if you don't stop... Witnessing marital Donna Brooks has never been to my liking, so I eased out of the room. 
And bumped into his delectable a bit of fabric as I'd encountered in several days. A tawny blonde with a benign eye. You look sort of grim. You know those people in there? Sandra and Arthur Maynard? I'm sure I know them. What's the pitch on the relationship? You sound like someone sent out to watch the silver. And I've run into a defendant of the family honor. Oh, not me. I know them, but I don't play in their yard. And never will. They don't get along. It's embarrassing. Well, that's because they're going to be divorced. He used to be her teacher at college. I guess they never straightened it out. Make quite a clatter out of it, don't they? This whole party has turned into a clatter. I think I'll go home. You uh, care to come along? Most encouraging invitation I've had in weeks. Lead on, fair lady. Lead on. What's the matter with that cab driver back there? Sounds like he was putting up quite a squawk. Hey, Mark, no, he's a very unreasonable fellow. Just because he waited half an hour for me, he felt he should drive us to your apartment. When I've got my own car, <laughs> he must be nuts. Yeah, it's a night to send anybody by me, Doris. Full moon, sky full of stars. Perfect night for romance. Or murder. What makes you say that? Just a thought. Do you um, always carry so much luggage in your car? I'm a nightclub singer. I'm going away for an engagement. Oh, too bad. Well, come with me. <laughs> what I do, push your piano around? Wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe I should come along and push your piano around. Come inside. First, uh, let's have a little light. What are yeah. you doing? Removing this pistol from your purse. What is it, part of the new look? Oh, Race, don't be like that. I'll go for you if you let me. I might even postpone going away. How would you like to talk about a man named Johnny O'Connor and $70,000? I might. There's something that might interest you in the bottom drawer of that bureau. Stuck. So are you, sucker. <laughs> ah, nice work, Doris. Now we can get rid of this chump for good. We'll return to the adventures of Frank Race in just about one minute. Back to the adventures of Frank Race. I came alive regretfully. The hazy conviction that my head had grown at least double and was still trying to expand. I told myself irritably this was no procedure for establishing Johnny O'Connor's innocence nor securing his insurance for his wife and child. Then I caught voices and I knew my best bet would be to play dead. Sign of life back there, Rocky? Nah, he's out cold. Better take a look and see if he's coming to. Ah, relax, will you? When I slug him, they stay out for hours. Well, flash the light on him and make sure. Okay, okay. Out cold as a mackerel. Ready. Here's the top of the hill. You uh, want him up front, don't you? Yeah, right behind the wheel here. Yeah. Give me a hand. All right. Yeah. There we go. Oh, this guy's big. He's hard to lift, all right. Let's give another heave. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Now, now, pour the liquor open. This ain't no new idea, you know. It's got to be done right or the cops get hep. Well, that's good enough. Now, I'll put the car in high. Ah, oh, I want to stay. Watch you go through that guardrail on the curb. Nothing doing. We're getting out of here. Uh, all set. Okay, then. Let it go. I said to grab the wheel. I lifted the car, fooled me, threw me sideways in the seat. I tried getting up, but the reflexes were off. That curve. I had to get control. If I didn't... Don't ever do that to yourself. I just sat there for a few seconds. And I 
Let's take her to a phone booth and ask Mark to come out and meet me. All I can say is it was your own fault. If I'd have been tagging along, it probably never would have even happened. I warn you about that, Dame. Well, she's very attractive, Mark. In spite of what occurred, I shall continue to think about her wistfully. Ah, uh, nah, she had a look. You know me, I never miss her, Dame. I agree. As the poet says, they're the most dangerous species. Most dangerous of the species, Mark. You take it from me, they ain't of anything. When it comes to working angles, dames are all by themselves. What are we gonna do with this car? Take it back. It ain't cracked up as much as my cab was. It ain't a bad car at all. Whose is it? The registration says it belongs to Thomas and Humphreys. Used car sales. That's where we're taking it? At midnight? The joint will be shut tight in Atlantic City in December. Well, let's get inside. Uh, you know some. They could call this breaking and enter. You mind? Uh, not so long as the cause is just. They need a new door here. Uh, you want my flashlight? No, yeah, street light's enough. Uh, you take that filing cabinet and see if you can find any papers on the car. I'll try the desk. Okay. How do they file these things? By license number, make a car, what? I ain't having no luck here. Never mind. Take a look at this. Uh, what do you got? Here's a registration application for the car. Made out in my name. According to this, I own it. Then unloan it as soon as you can. It needs new rings and a rebar. A tight little arrangement. Look, I don't get it. I do. If I'd been killed tonight, Mark, this slip would have been mailed to the Motor Vehicle Bureau in the morning. It would have covered my accident very nicely. Uh-oh. Looks like you're up against tough pitching, Rice. Well, there's more to this than just the missing 70,000. I wonder if I could squeeze any information out of Sandra Maynard. Squeeze? Another dame? In this case, chum, that ain't good. Well, you're wrong, Marcus. In this case, it ain't bad. <laughs> Sandra Maynard turned out to be one of those structures that a locksmith and a couple of carpenters could turn into a hotel over a weekend. The lady of the house greeted me in a sequence something that gave almost as much flash as she did. I instantly recognized one quality in her that I tabbed as dynamite. While you were with her, she'd make you forget all the other women you'd ever known. After our scrambled meeting last night, this is rather unexpected. But it's nice. Cigarette? Thanks, There'll be drinks along the moment. Manhattans and martinis. I'm sure you must like one or the other. There have been occasions when I've gone for both, to my <laughs> eventual distress. You're a attractive race. But then I suppose you already know that. You're uh, rather direct, Mrs. Maynard. And I'm sure you make good use of the trait. It saves time. Oh, don't say Mrs. Maynard. I hate the name. Call me Sandra. Everyone does. Even my chauffeur. I'm flattered. I wonder, have I stepped off on the wrong foot? With your facade, why worry? Suddenly I do find myself worrying. Do you mind if I try to impress you, Race? I think I'd enjoy it. Why did you come to see me? To talk business. Can't it wait? I don't think it should. Race, I have a feeling that you might be crusading. Did you know Johnny O'Connor? <laughs> do I look the type to know anything about a construction company? I inherited the thing from my father. I care so little about it, I've given my husband a quarter interest to get rid of him. What about your Johnny O'Connor? He was the bookkeeper who was supposed to have committed suicide after embezzling $70,000. And you don't think he did? Either one. Well, it seems that he handled the expense accounts for the firm, entertainment bills, items like that. I don't get the significance. The state's attorney general has been asking for funds from the legislature to investigate contracted bids for public works. Been complaints that your company's had inside information on supposedly sealed bids. So a lot of expense vouchers in your office became too hot to hold. Expense vouchers that might have been linked with the bribing of public officials. Well, what does all this have to do with that bookkeeper? Well, shall we say that with all those vouchers missing, say, $70,000 worth, O'Connor would be the patsy with nothing to back up the entries in his books. Especially if he weren't around to offer excuses. I'm afraid you've lost me, Race. 
I let Thomas run the company. And you know nothing about this? Mm, nothing. But I do know one thing. What's that? I'm glad you came into the picture. Thanks. I'm gratified. Oh, stop looking at your watch. You don't have to rush off, Ray. You know, it's getting late, and I have another call to make. On another woman? On your chief accountant, Irving Dalton. I want to see you again. If you'd care for my case history, I'm 26 and rather wealthy. In about 60 days, I shall no longer be encumbered with a husband. An interesting deposition. Don't worry. You'll never be lonely. <laughs> Nobody home, Race. Well, should be. This hour. Yeah, why don't you try to knob? Well, nothing like the direct approach. <laughs> Should've learned that earlier this evening from Sandra Maynard. Uh, there ought to be a light switch here somewhere. That's better. Now it. Hey, Race. Yes. It's Dalton. Look at his throat. Somebody must have choked the wadden out of him. He must have been showing signs of weakening. Let's get going, huh? No, no, let's look around. Uh -oh. Open the door, but keep behind it. Okay. Didn't know if it find your way, Dalton. Take a better look, Thomas. You'll notice he isn't awake. Say, what is this? Well, I know some inquisitive gentlemen who'd call it homicide. Where do you think you're going? Uh, I'm getting out of here. Not yet. I had nothing to do with this. Possibly not. But I have a hunch we can tie you in with Johnny O'Connor's murder. I had nothing to do with it. Oh, then you know it wasn't a suicide. No. No, I... Mark, I... dial the homicide bureau. Now, now, wait a minute. Uh, why can't we uh, sort of talk this over? We can. Why don't you start in? Mm, the first place... Race, look I... outside the window! <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> there were lights still on the home of Sandra Maynard... I told Mark to drift around the grounds, keep his eyes open, and then I rang the bell. The butler, appearing in a robe, insisted that his mistress had retired. I had him take me to her bedroom suite where we found her still up. She dismissed the butler. Do you mind if I go on brushing my hair, Reese? Not at all. It doesn't disconcert you? You know very well it disconcerts me, but at the moment there's something else. What else, Reese? I just came from Dalton's apartment. He's dead. We... And so is T.J. Thomas, your general manager. Dalton was strangled. Thomas was shot. Race. Race, you're not serious. Who could have done it? The police might think you did. I? Race, you're kidding. You don't think I did it, do you? The person who killed Dalton had the strength of a man. Do you have a pistol? Pistol? Have you ever had one? Yes. Yes, of course. But my husband's had it for some time. You can prove that? Well, I, I think so. The butler knows that Arthur has had it. But the permit was issued in your name? Yes, it was, but... There's a bullet in Dalton's apartment. The bullet that killed Thomas. The police are going to find it. When they check it in ballistics, your butler's testimony isn't going to be much good if they find that gun here in your room. But I told you I don't have the gun. I have a feeling that your husband is going to plant it here. Oh, Race, I'm all upset. Why would he do that? First, to cover himself. When you gave him that interest in the firm, he decided to make it pay off in a big way. He got Thomas and Dalton on the hook, and they started the bribery pattern for big profits. Oh. But you're the principal owner, so he's going to try to tag you with the guilt. Another thing, if you were to be executed for murder, he'd get another big chunk of your estate, since he's still your husband. Grace, what am I going to do? Well, we can wait for him. Then, when he gets here... I'm uh, already here, Grace. Thought... What's the matter, my darling? Lost your poise? Emulate Mr. Race. He's quite controlled. And that's your gun he's holding, Sandra? Yes. Yes, that's it. You've caused me a great deal of trouble, Mr. Race. The obvious suicide of O'Connor satisfied the police. Why didn't it satisfy you? Johnny O'Connor didn't have your educational background, Maynard. He'd never have used a word such as misappropriated. Not even in a suicide note. He used the same word when I interrupted that office meeting. Even Thomas was satisfied with embezzlement. You uh, smelled murder in one word? In two words. It was a simpler one. Well, Connor would have said books. Thomas called them books. You used records. The note said records. I admire superior intelligence, Mr. Race, but 
I'm afraid I'm going to have to dispose of you. You'll be a bit involved, won't it? Not at all. You came here to charge Sandra with crimes. She shoots you with the same gun that killed Thomas. Her gun, as you pointed out. She then commits suicide. Uh, Mr. Race, stop looking behind me as though there was someone there. Ah, but there is. What? I'll take what? care of Race. Yeah. Hey, I tell you, Race, you did just can't beat an end wrench in a pinch. <laughs> All you need is the right guy to flip it. Marcus, never have I been so happy to see your ugly face. Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins with Tony Barrett as Mark Donovan, came to you from Hollywood. The series is written and directed by Joel Murcott and Buckley Angel. The music is composed and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again this time one week from today for another dramatic chapter in The Adventures of Frank Race. Art Gilmore speaking. This is a Bruce Ells production. Ooh.